In the days of my youth, as a small-time local band member, I imagined my face someday featured on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. The printed embodiment of youth and rock culture, Rolling Stone was a magazine that told you what was cool. If you made the cover, you were where it's at. For a small town singer and bass player like me, receiving that honor would have been a dream come true. But oh, that dream was never quite as it seemed, because as I became a husband and dad, I started to see that I couldn't reach nirvana, so to speak, by living the rock and roll lifestyle. And I'm not only talking about the amoral behavior and anarchic attitude associated with rock and roll. See, I simply couldn't write songs, practice, and travel places to perform with a band while also providing for, teaching, and protecting my family as I felt I should. There was a kind of wall between the two things, and I knew I could only pick one. By the way, I couldn't be happier with what I chose. Because of the path I chose, and also because we kind of sucked, I knew my band would never make it big or get on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. And while doing so might have been a hope of mine in the past, I have to say I'd be ashamed of myself if it were a goal today. As a result of signing up for a credit card or some such thing, my wife recently ended up with a subscription to Rolling Stone magazine. I was initially glad to have it show up in my mailbox because it gave me an opportunity to bring some elevation to my knowledge of what's new and cool in rock and roll. Boy, was I wrong about that. I couldn't get past the contents page without throwing that rag across the room. Gun control this, race baiting that. Everything divisive in pop culture and politics was epitomized in that magazine. I decided I wasn't going to read one more article, admire one more photograph, or look up one more album review. Nope. I wasn't going to do it. Not even one more time. I decided then that Rolling Stone magazine was good for nothing at all. But I was wrong again. I knew how wrong I was when Rolling Stone dedicated its July 2013 cover not to a hard-working, under-recognized, extremely influential band, finally, but instead to a glamorous Jim Morrison look-alike photo of the one surviving Boston Marathon bomber. As I wondered why they would honor a mass murderer like that, and make no mistake, they did honor him with that cover shot. I realized what Rolling Stone was good for. Any publication that uses the First Amendment and artistic freedom and journalistic tradition as an excuse to honor mass murderers, while stoking racial tensions and attacking my God-given right to self-defense, a bundle of paper like that is actually very good for one unique purpose. Oh, you got it.